A warm welcome to VTU e Sectiona Program e Learning Center. So, in this module, we are going to see the continuation of module number five of Artificial Neural Network. The previous video, we have come across with an operational summary of simulation of OJAS rule. So, as we come across over there, we are going to see the simulation in this video. The simulation of OJAS rule. A computer simulation of OJAS rule. It is interesting to simulate OJAS algorithm. So, as we do so for the case of two dimensional normally distributed data set which is going to compromise 500 randomly generated vectors. So, the data points are distributed normally about the origin with mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 0 0.5, 0 0.5 in the x direction. So, the mean 0 and the standard deviation 0 0.05 is going to be present in the y direction which have been specified in this particular diagram. If you are going to see about the graphical representation of this simulation of OJAS rule which have been clearly mentioned over there as the values. So, the two weights of the linear neuron were initialized to 0.1 and 0 0.5, 0 0.1 and 0 0.5. So, 0 0.1 and 0 0.5, these two values are going to be get initialized and applications of this Hoja rule with a learning rate of 0 0.05 which is going to be get resulted. So, the initial weights are going to be initiated with 0 0.1 and 0 0.5 and the learning rate at a rate of 0 0.05 which is going to resulted in the weight trajectory which have been shown over here. Okay. So, this notice that how the weight matrix or the weight vector searches out the maximal eigen direction while its magnitude which is going to get approaches unity. So, the initial weight is going to be at 0 0.1 comma 0 0.5 and the final weights are going to be present at 1 comma minus 0 0.04 minus 1 comma 0 0.04. So, this two weights of this normal neuron which have been initiated as 0 0.1 comma 0 0.5 with an learning rate of 0 0.05 which resulted the weight, traje uh, weight trajectory in this final weight as 1 comma minus 0 0.004 which have been shown in this particular diagram. So, move on to the code lab a MATLAB code for this Hojas rule. So, this code shows the MATLAB program that was used to perform the simulation. This implementation assumes a single neuron with two weights that accepts the inputs as defined by the data scatter of this particular figure. So, this data scatter which have been shown over here in this figure now this has been used which accepts the input as defined by this scattered data. So, as in order to um, do the MATLAB implementations the data is going to be get generated initialized and performed and then the weight update procedure is going to be get implemented over there. So, that the input data in this simulation is going to be stored in the column of 2 cross 500 input matrix, 2 cross 500 input matrix okay. and which comment in the code should get you thorough about the rest. So, we are now in a position to modify this code to experiment with different shapes and orientations of the data scatter. Let me discuss about this and we are going to take we are going to generate the x scatter over here and we are going to generate the y scatter and creating an input data input is equal to x dash comma y dash matrix have been mentioned over here. Then we are going to make the data over here understand and we are going to make that the functions which have been given over there and the figure which is going to be hold and we are going to zoom it over there and we are going to plot the particular input 
parameter which have been present over there. The input parameter is going to be get plot the scattered data, the plot is going to be giving a stat scattered data. Then we are going to initialize the learning ratio ETA is equal to 0.1, ETA is equal to 0 0.05 like that we are going to initialize the value at this end and the weights are going to be get measured W is equal to 0.1 comma 0.5 as initial value we have been specified over there now that is going to be get initialized at this level and we are going to do a well to do 15 echo points are going to be get computed. The computation is going to be present with an 15 echo points. So, that is going to be get given over there. So, and finally, we are going to have the uh, activation of this particular computation. The computation is going to be get activated over there. Then the update, weight updates are going to be get analyzed. The weight updates are going to be get analyzed over there. And the plot, we, are, we need to plot the weights. The weight is going to be get plotted until we are going to get the final point of this label as to be get marked we are going to do the plotting ok such a way we are going to write the ojas rule for this with the help of a matlab so this compromises the particular simulation of this ojas rule process and it's going to provide the scattered data as specified by this particular matlab code such a way it's going to be get present over you Moving on to the principal component analysis of extracting the principal components, which is going to be called as Sanger's rule, S A N G E R apostrophe S, Sanger's rule. So, EGN directions defined by the EGN vectors of the correlation matrix of the input data stream, which provides a mean of characterizing or characterizing the properties of the data set. So, especially they respect what are called principal component directions in generally we can call it as orthogonal directions. So, what are called the principal component directions in the input space that account for the data's variance. For example, the EGN vector of this correlation matrix of this input data stream characterizes the properties of the data set and which represents the principal component directions in the input space that accounts for the data's variance. Coming to this example, if you are going to see about that, if one consider the data distribution, one notices that the large deviation is going to be present in the x direction and the very small deviation in the y direction. So, clearly that dominant direction is going to be an x direction and if we were to sacrifice the y component of the data dominance or data points. While retaining the x components, we would be able to reconstruct the data set within a certain maximum error. Of course, it is an another question whether the error is going to be tolerable or not. In generally, in many high dimensional approaches such as statistical pattern recognition, it is possible to neglect the information is less important directions while retaining the information along other more important one and it will be useful to reconstruct the data points within the accept acceptable error tolerances. As come to know about that the i dimensional applications, the i dimensional data can be effectively reduced or projected onto a lower dimension while retaining most of the essential intrinsic informations which is going to be used to recognize a data points. So, a reduction of this information, a reduction of this information in this way can lead to a large economy in storage and transmission cost. It then become an important issue to be able to identify the principal characterizing component for sufficiently accurate reconstruction of this data. So, the principal components directions are identified by EGN values of the correlating matrix of that particular input data stream that corresponds to the largest EGN value. Such a way, we are going to take the possible to neglect the information in a certain less important directions 
and retaining the information along other more important ones and it will be useful for us to reconstruct the data points to well within a acceptable tolerance error tolerance okay as we are going to take about this an acceptable error tolerance so that what happened the principal component theory attempts to search for an effective mapping of the data points from the original so this procedure which is going to involves finding the m dominant directions in the input space so typically we can say m uh, being less than uh, the input directions or dimensions of n so within the aim of this projecting n dimensional data onto an m dimensional subspace spanned by this m principal components so without sacrificing the information content of this particular data so this kind of function is going to be called as dimensional reduction this is going to be called as dimensionally reduction such a way it's going to be doing its process for a zero mean data uh, it can be shown that the first m principal components are uh, those m eigen values of correlation matrix r and that corresponds to an m large eigen values of the particular r value so without any loss of the uh, generality this eigen values can be ordered as lambda 1 or lambda 2 lambda 2 lambda 3 up to lambda m so this procedure involves finding the dominant directions in the input space as well as aiming of projecting the dimensional data on into the subspace spans by this particular principal components so that this is going to be called as a dimensionally reduction this is going to be called as dimensionally reduction with the lambda values of lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 etc up to lambda m so this sub uh, the subspace decomposition how it's going to be formed over there when we follow the closest or the closest of the neglected eigen value to zero the more effective is the approximation or dimensionally reduction data so in the summary to reduce the dimensions and the to perform the subsequent decompositions we have to go for this three steps analyze the correlation matrix r of the data stream to find its eigen value and eigen vectors eigen value and eigen vectors so we are going to say that analyze the correlation matrix r of the data stream to find its eigen vectors and eigen values and we need to project the data on the eigen direction that's the most important thing project the data we have to project the data on to the eigen direction and sometime we need to discard n and m components corresponding to the n m smallest eigen values we have to discard this components corresponding to the smallest eigen values such a way we can come for this subspace decomposition is going to be taken into particular action let me discuss about the important topic of this particular module sanger's rule our linear neuron based on hoja's update rule extracts the maximal eigen directions or the first principal component of the data stream rather interestingly we can see that an m node linear neuron network that accepts n dimensional inputs which can extract the first m principal components okay so if the following if you are going to see about this following expression which is going to be adapted for the weight update it will be easy to understand about that so m node linear neuron networks that accepts the n dimensional inputs can extract the first m principal components so this learning rule is going to be adapted for the weight update where del w i j is equal to we are going to take the value as which have been mentioned over here as alpha sj of xi minus summation of k is equal to 1 to j sk wik where j is equal to 1 2 3 etc up to m 
So, the j value is going to be mentioned over here. So, this rule is going to be called as Sanger's learning rule. The Sanger's rule reduced to the Hoja's learning rule for a single neuron and it is therefore clear that this until will reach the first or the maximal EGN vector or the first principal component of the input data stream. So, that we are going to have that the weight matrices of this m weights until converges to this first m EGN vectors that corresponds to the EGN value of lambda 1 is going to be greater than or equal to lambda 2 is greater than or equal to lambda 3 greater than or equal to etcetera up to lambda n. So, which searches the first EGN vector or the first principal component of this input stream and it is going to calculate the weight matrix of this m unit with convergence to the first m EGN vector value. Since this is going to be this rule is going to be called as Sanger's learning rule. Let me see about the next one generalized learning law, generalized learning law. So, we will put the adoption law for a single linear neuron in a more general context and formally analyze the behavior of two important cases. So, the essential results are summarized in the form of two generalized laws of adoption. So, we will closely follow the treatment which have been given in the generalized forgetting law which have been taken on a form of d w by d t is equal to pi of s x minus gamma of s w. Assume that the impinging input vector is a sophisticated or stochastic variable with stationary stochastic property. And whereas the neural weight network or a neural, a neural weight vector and are possibly non-linear functions of this neural signal. So, assume that y uh, sorry x is independent of w. So, that we are going to assume this as going to be independent of w, x is going to be independent of w. Okay. Now, I am here to answer for few of the questions, questions to address, what questions we have to address over here. Presently, we are interested in addressing the following questions because what kind of information does the weight vector asymptotically encode? How does this information depends on the generalized function of pi of and gamma of? We now propose to analyze in detail the behavior of the following two terms or two forms of adoptions. So, we are going to go and we are going to address about this queries with an help of adoption law, adoption law. Let me see about both the adoption laws, two laws are going to be get present over here to analyze. First we will see about law 1, next we will go for the law 2, adoption law 1 and adoption law 2. A simple passive decay of weight proportional to the signal, signal and reinforcement proportional to that of the external input that is going to be law 1. A law 1 states that a simple passive decay of weight proportional to the signal and a reinforcement proportional to that of the external input. So, that we are going to have this w dot is equal to minus alpha s w plus beta x. Move on to the next adoption law, adoption law 2. The standard Hebbins form of adoption with signal driven passive weight decay. The standard Hebbian form of adoption with signal driven passive weight decay, which is going to consisting of the same data, but a small change is going to be present over there. That note if the coefficient of alpha and betas are equal to some extent of k, thus the equation can be reduced from this. We can reduce this equations as like this. So, which has the familiar competitive learning form seen in the outstar learning in the ATR1 model. And recall that there were assumed the signals S to be binary 
in the present analysis, uh, anal analysis of S is going to be a real number. Since the X is stochastic with stationary properties, we are interested in the averaged or expressed or expected trajectory of this weight vector W. So, that taking this expectations to both sides, we are going to summarize this value, we are going to summarize this value as E of this terminology. So, adoption of this analysis, adoption law analysis, we consider this and since x is going to be stochastic, we are interested in the averaged of the expected trajectory of this weight vector w and we are going to get that one. So, where we assume the expectation to be conditional or w, conditional on w, the weight matrix below the conditional notations has been dropped for beverity. Also, we can denote the average of x and the correlation matrix x as we can derive that values and by that we can get an intermediate result. So, we will require the following intermediate results. Since x is going to be constant, we are interesting in analyzing how this w changes with respect to x. So, it has been clearly mentioned that how it is going to be get processed over here. Let me move on to the next topic, asymptotic analysis. For this purpose, we define theta to be an angle between x and w and take a look at this expected rate of change of the cosine of this angle. So, if you are going to see about that E of d cos theta by dt is equal to E of x bar transverse minus alpha s w plus beta x by x bar modulo and w modulo minus of x bar transverse w minus alpha s w modulo square plus beta x transverse w by the same. So, here we are going to find that where in the end we have employed the inequality since d cos theta by dt is a non-negative, it is going to be a non-negative and the theta convergence uniformly to 0 with d cos theta by dt is equal to 0 if x bar and the w have the same direction. Therefore, for the finite x value or x bar value and the w, the weight vector directions converges asymptotically to the direction towards x. Hence, we are going to finalize the expression as this. Where in the end, we have employed the inequality. Okay. So, as we are aware about that, the d cos theta by d theta is going to be non-negative. The theta converges uniformly to 0 with the d cos theta by d t is equal to 0 if x bar and the w have the same direction. Therefore, for the finite x bar and the w value, the weight vector direction converges asymptotically to the direction of x. Let me have the analysis of adoption law 2. The adoption law 2 also have to take the expectation of both sides with the help of a w value which is going to be get summarized with this expression. Understand? So, we are going to have this analysis. The analysis clearly specifies and it is going to have a transverse of this particular value with the expectation of both sides uh, conditions which have been considered for the w which yields E of w dot is equal to minus alpha x bar transverse w into w sorry w bar into w plus beta r w. So, from this we are going to get the expression value to find the fixed points to find the fixed points. Set the expectation of this expected weight derivatives to 0. So, we are going to make that is going to be 0, we are going to get the final value becomes lambda, final value becomes lambda 
w bar. So, clearly the EGN value of r are fixed point solutions of this w. So, now we are going to discuss about all EGN solutions for not stable. We are going to convey, we have to take this ith solution as the EGN vector of this r with corresponding EGN value. So, that the lambda i is equal to alpha x bar transpose into epsilon i by beta. Here theta is an angle between w and epsilon and the analysis the average value of rate of change of cos theta i on a condition of w. Okay. So, that it is going to yield the value as like that. For this the asymptotic analysis if you are going to deal about that which consisting of this e is equal to d cos theta by d t is equal to e of d by d t theta of this value which is going to compromise this expression with the help of this we are going to get b cos theta of lambda i minus w transpose r w by w square. So, which is going to be get provide the asymptotic analysis of this particular data understand. Now, move on to the asymptotic analysis it follows the form of relaying quotient that the parenthetic term is going to be guaranteed to be positively only for lambda i is equal to lambda max which means that for the EGN vector n max the angle of theta max between w and the monotically turns to 0 as the learning proceeds which is going to get providing the learn e d cos theta by d t is equal to b cos theta. So, beta cos theta i of lambda i minus w transpose r w by w modulo square. So, we have to identify the two limits for this we have to identify the limits. So, let me go and identify the limit first limit theorem the first limit theorem let a is going to be greater than 0 and s is equal to x transpose w let gamma of s be an arbitrary scale or function of such s that is going to be exist. Let me find or let me make x of t is a subset of r be a stochastic vector with the stationary stochastic properties. So, that x being the mean of x of t and x of t being independent of w. So, if that equation is going to be then it going to be formed as w is equal to e of alpha x minus gamma of s into w which have non-zero bounded asymptotic solutions then this solutions must have the same direction as that of the x such a way it is going to get present over you. And the second limit theorem move on to the second limit theorem let a comma s and gamma of s be the same in the limit theorem 1 let r is equal to e of x and x transpose be the correlation matrix of the x then the equation which is going to be get transpose into this term which have as non-zero bounded asymptotic solution then the solutions must have the same direction as n max is going to be the maximal which is going to be the maximal. So, that the EGN value, so that the EGN value of our EGN vector of r within the EGN value which is going to provide this value is going to be 0. So, therefore, the theorem 1 and 2 summarize what we have learnt until now. If you go through this proof carefully, the function y of s which pre multiplies the weight dk term which can be seen to have no effect on what the neuron learns asymptotically. In fact, 
what the neuron eventually learns which is going to be called as encodes into its weight vector. So, the neuron eventually learns depends on the function of theta of d, which pre multiplies the input vector x if the theta is a constant then the weight matrix or the weight vector settles asymptotically to the average of the input vector string. If theta is going to be a neuron sigma then the learning law is going to be heaven in the form and the weight vector converges asymptotically to the first principal component which is going to be a maximal EGN direction of that particular input stream such a way the laws are going to be get confirmed which is going to be get summarized and move on to the competitive learning revisited. A competitive learning network cluster encodes and satisfies an input data stream in a way such that the vector which logically belonging to the same category or same vector that share similar properties causes the same neuron into the network to win the competition such a way it is going to be get present over there. So, the competitive learning algorithm which uses competitions between the lateral neuron in a layer which is going to be called as lateral in connections to provide the selectivity or the localization of the learning process. So, from that we are going to say about that the competitive network is maybe a cluster or an encode or a classify data by identifying and the vectors which logically belonging to the same category and with shares the similar property share the similar property. And we have come across about this competitive learning algorithm which uses the competition between the lateral neuron in a layer and to provide the selectivity of the learning process or into the localization. Okay. So, with the help we are going to move on to the principles of competitive learning, principles of competitive learning. The basic principle the basic principle that underlies the competitive learning is that in a layer of neuron either exactly one or small clusters of neuron is going to be activated by the impinging input vector by the impinging input vector. So, we are going to have the types of competitions as hot competition and soft competition, hot competition and soft competition. Most competition uh, model uses hard competitions where exactly one neuron the one with the largest activation in the layer is going to be declared the winner. As we have seen as instant of such uh, winner take all competitions in the ART 1 F2 layer where the lateral connections combine with a faster than linear signal function together causes and hard competition between this neurons. Okay. So, exactly one neuron the one with the largest activation in that layer is declared as a winner is going to be called as hard competition. In other words the soft competition in other words the competition suppresses the activities of all neurons except those that might lie in a neighborhood or the true winner this is called a soft competition. Okay. The competition suppresses the activities of all neurons except those that might lie, lie in a neighborhood of the true winner neighborhood of the true winner. So, these are the two things are going to be called as hard competition and soft competition are going to be called as types of competition. A good example about the soft competition is going to be Mexican hat knits, Mexican hat knits a competitive learning is going to be localized. Let me discuss about this Mexican hat knits, hat knits in a detailed way competitive learning is going to be localized. 
we will investigate one such class of network Mexican hack network that emulates soft competition in the further section in the further slides also. Whether the competition is going to be hard or soft competitive learning algorithm employs the localized learning by updating the weights of only the active neuron. In doing so the competitive learning algorithm attempts to identify code book vectors that represents the variant features of a cluster or classes ok that is going to be a code book vectors which is going to be get represents the clusters or classes. For example, an ART1 out star which stores a patent class code book found by taking the intersection of the patterns that lead to resonance in the F2 neuron corresponding to that of the out star that is going to be the example for this. Let me discuss about the vector quantization what actually the vector quantization is. As we are aware about that uh, when many patterns of x k causes a cluster neuron j to fire within a maximum activation its code book vector which behaves like a quantizing the vector in the sense that it acts as a representative of all numbers or all members of the cluster or the class. So, this process of presenting or representation is going to be called as vector quantization and as its principal application is a signal compression, function approximation and image processing for the various other fields. So, coming to this principal application which, which consisting of a three techniques signal compression, function approximation, image processing, signal compression, function approximation, image processing. Okay. So, as we have discussed about that when many patterns causes a clustered neuron to fire with the maximum activation of its code book vector which behaves the quantization vector in the sense that it acts as a representative for all the members of the clusters or a class is going to be called as a vector quantization. This principle comprises the signal compression, the functional approximation and image processing and various other fields also going to begin involved along with that. Let me see principles of competitive learning from this particular process. Competitive learning network. Formally we can state that the principle of competitive learning network like this. In a given sequence of stochastic vector which are drawn from possibly a unknown distributions, each vector pattern x k is compared with a set of initially randomized vectors with w i w 1 j or w i j w n j understand. So, and the vector of this w j which matches the best match with x is to be updated to the match of more closely or more closely. So, to implement this competitive learning formally requires a similarity measure to implement the process of competition and a learning law in accordance with the which winning neurons will be updated. So, we are going to have a code book vectors and we have cluster units and we are going to have a s x value. So, we know that we have uh, we, we can take a look at both of this requirements over here. So, that the local learning algorithm use informations available only at the synapse in each question as pre and post cinematic signals or pre and post cinematic activations understand. So, this figure 
which portrays the three clusters of vector denoted by the solid lines, denoted by the solid lines, this solid lines, which is going to distribute on the unit of sphere S cube. Initially randomized code book vector which is going to be denoted by the cross. In the top figure gradually if you are going to see about that it is going to be divided into a cross. Finally, the figure gradually moves under the influence of the competitive learning rule to approximate the centroid of this clusters as shown in the lower figure. Understand? So, the competitive learning scheme used the code book vector to approximate the centroids of this data cluster. So, the three clusters of vectors which are denoted are distributed on the unit sphere as I can uh, take a color and I am going to specify for you to clear understanding this is 1, this is 2 and this is 3, these are the 3 clusters of vectors. So, this is the first cluster, second cluster, third cluster. Understand? Initially what we are going to do this, the randomized code book vector, the cross points. I am going to take one more color, I am going to make it the cross points. This is the cross points which have been taken over there. The code book vector moves under the influence of the competitive learning rule to approximate the centroid, to approximate the centroids to the cluster. So, that what happened? The competitive learning schemes are going to be using the code book vector to approximate the centroids of the data cluster. So, we can observe above that from this and we are going to take the particular data streams are going to be get present over here. So, it is going to be attract the clusters, all the data are going to be attracted toward that, toward the cross points. So, the competitive learning scheme which is going to apply, it is going to influence the particular data to attract, to approximate the centroid of the cluster. So, all the data is present over there is going to be attracted toward the particular x which is going to get attracted over there. It can be easily understood by this particular diagram, understand or not? So, this figure portrays the three clusters of vectors denoted and distributed on the unit spheres and initially what happened? The randomized code book vector in the top figure, if you are going to see about this top, gradually moves under the influence of the competitive learning rule to approximate the centroids of the culture of the cluster. And if you are going to see about that, it has been attracted, influenced and it is going to be attracted over there. It can be easily understood by this. So, this is going to be an example of this particular data which have been given for the competitive learning. As we have come across about that, to implement the competitive learning formally, we require a similarity measure to implement the process of competition and a learning law in accordance with which winning neurons will be get updated. So, that we have taken the particular diagram, we are going to take this value which consisting of x value, the code book vectors and the cluster units. So, the local learning algorithm used this information available on that of the synapse in the question such as pre and post cinematic signals or pre and post cinematic activations, understand? So, that it is going to apply the particular code book vector initialized randomized initially randomized code book vectors which moves under the influence of this competitive learning and it is going to approximate the centroids. So, which have been clearly observed over there. So, so that the competitive learning scheme use code book vector to approximate the centroid of data cluster. So, I am going to wind up this video over here, we will continue this in the next video. Thank you.